Okay guys, in this video I want to do a steward problem and exactly I want to do the problem from chapter 10, section 1, problem 41. So, what this problem says? This problem says that we have two circles. Uh, first we have Cartesian coordinates. Uh, I think I'm gonna need bigger one, so let's draw a bigger one. I have Cartesian coordinates and in this, in this Cartesian coordinates I have two circles. The first one is with radius A. Let's say I have the small one with the radius A. And the big one is with radius B. And this one is with radius B. And what do I have? I have a line segment on this, uh, between these two circles. And on the line segment, uh, I want to draw a point. And how I'm going to draw this point? I will take these two points, I will take two perpendiculars, and here I will have my point P. Let me erase this. Uh, this is going to be my point P. Yeah. And P has coordinates X and Y. So I can see when I'm going to take this line segment and move around my circle, this point is going to describe some curve. This curve is going to be closed because this point never will go uh, beyond the second circle. And my goal for this problem, I want to find the equation of this curve and I want to recognize this curve. And how am I going to do this? As exactly way to approach this problem is use parametric equations. Why? Because here, if I have this line segment, I have one really important parameter. I have this angle, let's say, theta. I don't think you see this one, so let's say this is angle theta. So what can I do with this x and with this y? I want to rewrite x in terms of theta. I want to rewrite y in terms of theta. And then I, I will find the equation of x and y in terms of theta. I want to eliminate the parameter and I will get the closed form uh, of the equation of this curve. So step one, and like in two basically, is to find uh, how I can express x and y in terms of theta. So let's take a look at this picture and let's try to visualize what is the x component and what is the y component at some point. Uh, Let's keep uh, that during some time theta. So what does it mean? It means like we started like uh, with this. So my point P in this case is going to be here. Yes. And then after uh, theta uh, time period, my point is going to be here. And for this point, I have X component and I have Y component. So what is my X component in this case? My x component, you can see, is going to be just pro projection into x axis. But in this case, it means I'm going to have the length of this line segment. And the length of this line segment is exactly as x of theta. Okay. Then, what is my y of theta? y of theta is going to be the, la the length of this line segment. y of theta. So my goal is right now to express the length, how the length of this line segment change during the time when theta is changing. changing. Uh, if you will take a look at this, like for a second, you can recognize a couple of triangles. And how we're gonna find uh, our equation, we're gonna use triangles. In this case, it's easier to see for the y one. Because this line segment is exactly equal to the, this one. Why? Because it will just uh, par parallel translation. But here, what do I have over here? Let's redraw it. Uh, let's, let's say this. Here, I have a circle with a radius uh, A. And I have this my purple one uh, line segment. And I have this orange one. And my green one. I don't care about green. Let's just use this one. Yes. And my angle theta. And I want to find this y of theta. But I know that the length of this segment is a. And then I know that uh, sine theta from here is what? Is y of theta over a. So from here I can conclude that y of theta equals to a sine theta. And I got my first equation. Okay, 
And the next thing I need to find my X of theta. But X of theta is going to be almost the same picture. Why? Uh, take a look right now at the bigger circle. And then for this bigger circle, let me also redraw this picture. I will have, let's have circle with a radius B. Then my X of theta is going to be uh, this line segment. Uh, my purple segment is this one. And my other side is going to be this one. So what do I, want, what do I know here? I know that this is my B. Uh, green one is my X of T. And this is my angle theta. So by the same principle, I can find that cosine theta just equals to X of theta over B. So from here, I can see so from here I can see that my uh, x of theta is equals b cosine theta. And after I'm going to plug in here, I will get b equals cosine theta. So what uh, did I got over here? Uh, I got the parametric equation of x and y in terms of, or in terms of theta. OK, uh, what we can do, we can plug in a couple of thetas and double check that this equation indeed describes how these points move between these two circles. But right now, I want to describe what's the shape of this one. And the shape of this one, if you're going to divide both sides for x by b and both sides uh, uh, for y by a, then you can see by using the trick identity cosine square theta plus sine square theta, this is exactly an ellipse which one is x over b squared plus y over a squared equals to 1. And this is true. What's the shape of this ellipse? It's going to look something like this. So this, your x of theta and y of theta. OK, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And just yes, bye bye.